When you're looking to buy a rental property in Columbia, South Carolina, there are six things that will impact your decision to buy a rental here. Welcome, I'm Bethany and I'm a realtor here in Columbia, South Carolina. I also invest and own rental property myself. So let's go over those six things that could change your mind about buying and investing here in Columbia. The first thing that you need to know if you are buying an investment property anywhere is that the interest rate is higher. A lot of first-time investors are shocked to learn that despite putting at least 20% down, the interest rates for investment properties are higher than those for a primary residence. And that holds true for residential loans and commercial loan products. Now, not always, but traditionally, you can expect the rate to be approximately 1% higher on an investment property than what you're seeing on the primary residence rate. The second thing that could hold you back from buying an investment property in Columbia, South Carolina, are property taxes. Taxes. Here in South Carolina, if you live in a property as your primary residence, you get a tax break. If a property is not owner occupied and it's an investment property, your taxes will be about three and a half times higher. That's substantial. And then your taxes will also increase because the county is going to reassess your property value at some point after closing. So that is a three and a half times increase. And that's gonna be based on your recent and probably higher purchase price for the property. I know it's a lot. I own several investment properties, so I really feel your pain here. I always run a tax estimate for my clients when they're considering buying an investment property so that they know exactly what to expect and they don't get caught off guard after closing. The third thing that you need to know about buying an investment property in Columbia, South Carolina is that an annual permit is required within the city of Columbia city limits. All residential rental units are required to have a rental permit from the city unless you live there in some capacity. The permit costs $25 and is good for one year. There are different types of applications depending on your individual investment situation. If you are not a business and you have up to four residential rentals, that's going to be a different application than having five or more rental properties. If you are at five Five or more, the city considers you to be a business and they're going to require you to have a business license. And your permit fee is going to be waived, but that's in lieu of the business license fee that you'll have to pay the city as well. The fourth thing that you need to know about buying an investment property here in Columbia is that a local agent might be required. If you live or work outside of a 45 mile radius of your property. The city of Columbia requires you to have a designated local agent can be anyone who will take responsibility of the property in your absence and serve as a point of contact for the city on your behalf. It doesn't have to be an actual real estate agent or property management company, but you have to have someone here that you know that is willing to be your designated agent and point of contact. The fifth thing that might deter you from buying an investment property in the city of Columbia are the occupancy laws. Single family residential homes are only allowed to have a maximum of three, three unrelated individuals residing in the home. Does not matter how many bedrooms you have. If the occupants are unrelated, three is your max. Our state governor, Henry McMaster, even challenged the city's occupancy laws at the state Supreme Court a few years ago, and he lost. The Supreme Court found in favor of the city zoning board, and they upheld that three-person max. Now, how this is not a federal fair housing violation based on familial status, I have no idea. I'm not an attorney. And apparently Henry and his legal team did not go that route for their legal strategy. This zoning law is intentionally designed to keep college students from being packed like rats into the nice homes and neighborhoods that border USC's campus where homeowners have paid a lot of money to live there and they really don't want to have a frat house next door. Or people People passed out on their lawn on a regular basis. The sixth thing that you need to know about Columbia, South Carolina investment property is about short-term rentals. The city of Columbia recently passed an ordinance requiring that all short-term rentals have a business license and that they pay an annual permit fee. 
It is good for one year and the permit fee is $100 if you occupy the home in some capacity and it's $250 if you don't personally occupy the home in some capacity. Some of our current city council members are not fans of having short-term rentals like an Airbnb or a VRBO in residentially zoned neighborhoods. This current fee structure is what they have agreed to now, but it is entirely possible that that could change in the future. So if short-term rentals interest you, you'll want to keep an eye on what council members are saying in future years. If you are still keen on investing after hearing this and you want to know what your options are, hit subscribe and reach out so we can have a strategy call about your real estate goals and how we can accomplish them together.